YouTubers lie. And they hide stuff. I would like to not do that. I would like to tell you all the lessons learned from this little project. Personally, I think it came out really good and my sister really loved it. It was for her daughter uh, to be born here pretty soon and we're all very excited. But yeah, my first lesson learned and something I wouldn't lie to you about is plywood. I was going to freaking title this $30 toddler closet. You know, build it yourself. Because the, the plywood was $31. The, the plywood that you're seeing me cut right now. Uh, the problem is this freaking plywood sucked. And you should buy higher and nicer plywood. Because by the time I put putty on it and sanded it and all that, my time turns into money even if you're only making 18 bucks an hour or 20 bucks an hour if you're spending two hours on a piece of plywood extra that's 40 bucks you might as well go and buy a 70 dollar piece of plywood and i know you know things are tight and, and maybe you don't appreciate your time that much i do i should bought a 70 dollar piece of plywood and i did not and i don't have a miter saw or a table saw at home so i do recommend that you if you don't have one either all you have is a scale saw like me that you build one of these track jigs just google you know make my skill saw intro track saw which it doesn't I, right now i'm cutting the two sides of my little toddler closet they are 16 inches at the bottom and 12 inches at the top so i kind of cut the big square out of the piece of plywood and then i kind of i'm cutting one of them would be at the bottom and one of them me at the top and that way i maximize the uh, plywood wood and i i just used ikea uh, cubbies for the bottoms and, and they look really good after roughly cutting the plywood for the sides i come in and separate the pieces with my jigsaw right now i'm measuring up that my little ikea box would fit so i just do the cubby plus a little bit of space plus the plywood on top and plywood on the bottom and then i connect that point to the top of that box and then i cut that triangle out that gives me that little triangle uh corner by the way i clamp both of them together and make sure like they were exact twins and then i cut this with the skill saw and my little jig and then i go in with the flush cut and finish that i I could have came in with the jigsaw again. It's underneath my uh, saw bench right there. But I just thought the pull saw would be a cleaner cut. Now it's time to cut the bottom, shelf, and top. One, two, three. First project, first freaking cut on my little saw bench. So for this particular project, I did uh, choose to go the pocket hole route since it is a closet grade project and not real furniture because real furniture requires real joinery shots fired this particular jig i think was like 30 dollars at home depot and here's the advice that i can give you make sure that the material you're using is in fact half inch three quarter or inch and a half other than that clamp it clamp it with enough clamping force that the jig doesn't move when you're drilling drill softly maybe pulling it pulling it in and out so that that way you don't move the jig again the jig has to be perfectly there the whole time in fact on later projects what i end, uh, end up doing is I, I use the vice grip mechanism that comes with the kit and i put an extra clamp further in towards where the drill comes in at I, they, they they sell better jigs like 150 dollar jig i'm sure that one you don't need to do anything and i'm sure they, ha they have a jig with a vacuum I keep blowing on the holes. <laughs> it's doing a lot. The jig is doing a lot. Just, you know, be careful. Maybe use a testing piece. I did not do that. I just went straight for the straight to the project I'm I'm making. They recommend that you clamp and square these before you screw them. So here I am uh, using my uh, pipe clamps. They they might be expensive. They might not be uh, in terms of clamps that can be this big they're actually very inexpensive i've been hobby making for a bit so i i have acquired clamps and little tools here and there every every project i i usually buy something on this project i bought the pocket hole jig and so it doesn't feel like i have a lot of tools and in fact this is very much a minimalist tool build i've used a drill an impact pocket hole jig the cheap one that was 30 bucks 
Uh, skill saw that was free. Somebody gave me a skill saw. I have like three or four. What else? A, a pencil uh, and a couple squares. Premium dab filler. That's what I use to fill up all the imperfections and screw holes on my ply. And I also used it on the front uh, edges to hide away the ply edges. And actually, I'm pretty happy with that. the result of the premium dab filler for the edges. As you can see on the video, it, it came out nice. Now I'm adding a stretcher. And I did it on top of the shelf instead of bottom of the shelf because it's not really a shelf. You're supposed to hang close there. But if it was a shelf, then it would allow for things not to fall behind the little toddler closet. This step needs to be taken. You don't have to do it with a router. You could do it with sandpaper. However, a router is just going to give you a, a uniform look to these roundovers. I went with roundovers too, just for that softer look. I, I was super into 45 chamfers uh, a few years back, but right now I'm super into the roundovers. Even my little bench right there has the same roundovers as I'm doing on the closet. After I go around the whole thing, make sure everything has a nice roundover. I give it a light sanding, and I think I add a little bit more dab filler on top of those edges again, just to hide the plywood, because the plywood has end grain on some of the plies on some of the places when you paint over them the end grain just sucks more paint and has a different texture and so you end up seeing how many plies you have and it just it's not a good look and uh, the dab filler and the primer really took away those plywood feel and look to those edges and i'm, I'm really happy with the results at this point, I painted the bottom of the cabinet for two reasons. Reason number one, I wanted to see the color in a bigger sample. Uh, and I really did like this color. This color is called Valerina. I got it from Home Depot and I used PPG paint or Glidden. I used Glidden paint. Yeah, this is just a big sample. And that this way, I, can, I don't have to worry about painting the bottom. I can just paint the rest of the cabinet. Then I put rubber feet on it before I paint it, and that way I can paint it all the way to the floor. So that's why I, I'm doing this step before the rest of the painting step. Uh, I go about, about an inch in from both sides, so you can't really see the cabinet. and actually just ends up looking like it's floating, but it's protecting the cabinet from spills. It's protecting your other furniture. Next, you're going to prime the whole thing. And I use this Kills Premium 3 to prime it. It worked good. It spread right. And now I'm looking for a closet rod. I find a random one inch dowel. I'm very happy that I found this because I didn't have to buy it. Now I'm thinking, I told my wife I was gonna paint this today and she could come out there and, and, and help me paint it with my daughter and it was gonna be fun. So I don't wanna go to Home Depot and waste my time finding closet hardware. And also, you know, closet hardware is cost money, right? Scrap plywood does not cost money. Scrap plywood is free. So I got the closet rod for free and the scrap plywood that I made into closet hardware was also free. The way I'm making the hardware closet is by cutting two squares, somewhat squares. I, again, I'll have some drawings for you. I should probably put them on that video here pretty soon. Uh, so yeah one inch rod so i'm putting one inch hole in in both of my squares and after that and on one of my squares i'm gonna saw a slot so it's gonna be a slotted one inch hole i'm using my pool saw pretty cool yeah i am sunning it smooth after that i gotta finish my rod i was looking for some poly or some lacquer and I forgot to clean my tip on my lacquer. So I'm using boiled linseed oil. The boiled linseed oil is going to make this poplar pop. Okay. I, I, if, if you know poplar, you know poplar is kind of ugly. Well, this linseed oil is going to make it look hot. Okay. I, I really like this finish on it. So this boiled linseed oil will end up polymerizing a little bit, which means it hardens up and it reaches inside the fibers of the wood and protects it. It's not like a super film protectant, but it protects it really good. In fact, that's what I use for to finish my uh, bench saw. And so yeah, I'm giving it another coat right now because I really like it. I painted this with my wife and daughter, so I didn't really record a whole lot. It was like a family moment. And yeah, we basically gave it two coats of paint and one coat of primer underneath that. 
and I let it dry for three days before I delivered it to my sister, but here I am delivering it to my sister and my nephews were very excited 